Um, please gather yourself, get ready for the word of God, amen. I am the youth minister, CJ. Um, please ask any questions you have about the gospel. Uh, I'm here just to give you what the word says, and the only way that I can interpret it is through the Holy Spirit. Um, I'm not going to rely on what I know um, of the world to encrypt the message of, of the Lord. I'm going to simply rely on the Holy Spirit to give me his wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. And today we're going to come from Genesis 2. That's what we're going to come from today. And we're going to start at verse 7. We're going to start at verse 7. I hope everybody's having a great week. I hope everybody is um, feeling blessed and ready to replenish their spirit with um, the water of the word. Amen. So please continue to um, prepare yourself and your environment to receive a word. Well, the word. So Genesis 2, and we're going to start at verse 7. And... Um, I'll give you a couple minutes or a couple seconds just in case I haven't found it yet. All right. <clears throat> Genesis 2, starting at verse 7. And the Lord God formed a man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living soul. Eight. And the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden, and there he put the man whom he had formed. And out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. The tree of life also in the midst of the garden, and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. 10. And a, riv and a river went out of Eden to water the garden, and from thence it was parted and became into four heads. The name of the first is Python, that is, that is it which compasseth the whole land of Havilea, where there is gold, and the gold of that land is good. There is hmm, Delium and the Onyx Stone, 13. And the name of the second river is Gaia, the same is it that compassed the whole land of Ethiopia. 14. And the name of the third river is Hidiko, that is it which goeth toward the east of Assyria. And the fourth river is Euphrates. And 15. And the Lord God took the man and put him into the garden of Eden. So, as we know, the Bible is very detailed. So, got to pay attention to those details. It doesn't um, give us those details for no reason. Uh, it goes to show that um, there were many rivers that were um, going out of Eden to water the garden that God had planted. So God already, you know, sets up an ecosystem that can live off of itself. So if you ever think that God has forgot something or missed a detail, think again. 15. And the Lord God took the man and put him into the garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. 16. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat. 17. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof thou shalt surely die. And that's what I'm going to be coming from today. Um, the topic of the message is walking into a blessing. Um, I want you to take a second to think about the birth process. Um, as we all are now here living on earth, um, I don't believe anybody asked to be here. Um, we were placed here by the grace of the Lord. Um, Even the first man that was formed did not ask to be formed. 
So if it's to our benefit not to really look at um why am I here? Because if you are here, that means God has given you a reason to be here. He has predestined a reason for you to be here, just like he had a reason for Adam to come into the uh, to the earth. And then, of course, Eve and then Cain and Abel. So everybody has a predestined um, purpose to be here on earth. So if you're looking for your purpose and you are a believer in the kingdom, well, your main purpose is to serve the Lord. And then you ask the Lord, what talents have you blessed me with so that I can be of uh, value to the world? So I'm not going to get too far ahead of myself. I'm going to take my time. Um, a lot of times we are, well, I think it's, it's amongst different um, cultures, but a lot of people want to know where they came from. You know, they want to know. Uh, what land they came from, what they're mixed with. Uh, you want to say your baby hairs came from your great, great, great. <laughs> you got 2% Indian. But um, you came from the Lord. Amen. Um, you came from the ground. Uh, we might be shaped differently, but we're all dirt, as the word says. So, um, as much as you want to dress up your vessel, um, it's not as valuable as what's in your vessel. Because the, the word says that in seven, and breathe into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. So God made you more valuable once he re, uh, gave you the breath of life. So now you are able to fulfill your purpose. So without that breath of life, you're still dirt. If we think about when we transition into heaven and we're at funerals and, you know, we pass the casket, um, you know, they're not moving. You know, so without that breath of life in your vessel, you are dirt. You're going to return back to that form. So. I, I feel a lot of times that we get focused on like how we can improve our outer man, but we don't really enhance our inner being. We don't focus on um, actually benefiting from the fruits of the spirit rather than benefiting from taking a selfie that might get a certain number of likes that gives you confidence in your being. But if you sought the gospel to give you confidence of who you are, um, you wouldn't rely on man to gas you up because man will also let you down. So this message is about Adam walking into this environment that he did not ask for that was actually kind of like a silver spoon type of setup, like children that are born into wealthy families. And of course, you know, being born into the kingdom, you're born into a wealthy family, amen. But Adam was the first one that was able to walk into an environment that was only good. There was only good present. He had the fruit. He was able to name the trees or the animals, and he was able to just sustain until it was time, you know, for the Lord to come. But along with this blessing came one instruction and that's what i am wanting to emphasize is that god has already set us up a bountiful harvest but there are some instructions a lot of times that we're not able to walk into this land flowing with milk and honey because we have a tough time following directions. So I want to keep going. Eight. And the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden, and there he put the man whom he had formed. 
And out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. The tree of life also in the midst of the garden and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. So not only, not only are there trees of food and pleasant to the sight, but there is the tree of life and also the tree of good, the knowledge of good and evil. So there are different um, options for Adam to choose from. I'm going to skip the river part and go down to 15. And the Lord God took the man and put him into the garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man saying, of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat, but of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. See, 17 starts with a but. See, he said, you got all of this, but. And see, how often do we get in positions where God blesses us with an abundance, but there's a but. And sometimes we don't like the but. We want to be like, but you blessed me with all this. Why can't I do what I want to do with it? It's kind of like somebody giving you something you did not ask for that is actually good for you. They give you instruction on how to keep it, but you think you know how to manage it better than they do. But they are the ones that actually gave it to you. So I'm speaking for myself as well because I think it's just a part of the sinful nature of man to, to, to rebel, to go against, to think that we know more than God, because let's keep reading. Um, and the Lord God commanded the man saying, of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat, 17, but of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. So, when the Lord says that thou shalt surely die, he's not saying that you're going to return back to dirt as you started. But he is saying that death as a separation from him. Because if you have read the story of uh, Adam and Eve in the garden, then you do know that in the end, the instruction was not followed. Now, there are some details, of course, Eve comes and things like that, but Adam knew that I have all of this, I didn't ask for all of this, but I've also been given an instruction to maintain all of this. See, Adam was blessed with abundance from the start. And He didn't know anything but having abundance. That's, man, that's a lifestyle that I did not, I was not born into. Um, he was able to do whatever he wanted to do in this garden, but this one thing. Now, Adam did not have a problem keeping his instruction until somebody else arrived into the picture. Now, I'm not a person that is um, against being uh, friendly or having a lot of friends, but uh, if you have heard me teach before, most of the things that I um talk about or well, some of the things are going to be discipline and following the right voice following the right direction so adam started off with a blessing a uh, bountiful harvest and then he's given the instruction to maintain it and then here comes eve now if you have read the story adam immediately says his vows, he marries her and puts her in a position 
of influence, bone in my bone, flesh in my flesh. So what tends to happen is that we start off with a bountiful harvest and then we allow other influences to come in and lead us astray from our original instruction. I believe that everybody has a bountiful harvest waiting on them, but are you disciplined enough to maintain it? Because if you allow different influencers or people just, you know, it could be your mom, your friend, even somebody from, you know, any type of organization you may be a part of, that if you let them override the original instruction of the Lord, then you're going to see a decrease in your harvest. And so that's why God says that when you eat of this, you you shall, for in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. So even though that the instruction is there, it does not stop Adam from participating in the instruction with Eve. So once that instruction is not taken heed to, then if you keep reading, uh, Adam and Eve and the serpent are cursed. And now they are kicked out of the Garden of Eden. And now they now Adam has to work. Now Eve uh, will feel pain during the process of childbirth. And the serpent has to slither on his belly for the rest of his days. So. Don't let somebody talk you out of your harvest, because just like the beginning, the topic is walking into a blessing is because when we come into this life, it is not something we ask for, but it is a blessing. Um, I think sometimes we get so overwhelmed with the pressures that the world tries to uh, put us in bondage with that we're not able to see how how much how life is such a blessing to us and now that you have your harvest how do you maintain your harvest and are you disciplined enough to maintain it whenever another influence does come and they try to um leverage your ear they 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 leverage their relationship with you in order to get you to do something they want you to do. So whenever you do that, you become obedient to them rather than being obedient to the Father. And we all know that obedience is better than sacrifice. So anything you sacrifice doesn't mean much to God because God is the one that gave it to you in the first place. So obedience is a choice. Obedience is a form of submission unto the Lord which shows that you are willing to follow his authority rather than someone else's or even your own. And when we do it that way, we are able to maintain our harvest. But we have a lot of people that um, flash the flashy things and it catches our attention. And then we think that this person can add value onto our lives. But we also know that um, I believe Jesus said, how can a man add one cubit to a statue? So no man can add value unto you because God has already placed the value inside of you. You just have to be able to unlock it and act on it and, and stand on it and not allow somebody else to determine your wealth, determine your value. Whenever you do that, you put in your value to someone else's hands that may not even understand what your true value is themselves. So never allow man, humans, to determine your value. Go to the Lord and ask, Lord, what talent have you blessed me with so that I can be valuable to the land so that I can, in return, receive a bountiful harvest? Everybody has a talent. Um, as the scripture says, even the person that God called a slothful servant, the one that he was upset with, he still gave him one talent. So if you think that there is not one thing that God has blessed you with, um, you're lying to yourself. Um, everybody has a talent that is fruitful to the land and can be 
use to provide a service to the world and the world will pay you for that now as well once you start building wealth then you also need to know how to manage wealth but that's that comes with um you know the process of discernment and the process of discipline to be able to know that yes at one point i was only paying um let's just say a hundred dollars in time but then once your uh income increases well now it's a thousand so are you disciplined enough to still pay a thousand dollars in time like you were to pay that hundred? So whenever we just the Lord one time gave me revelation about scripture says faith without works is dead. And Sometimes we can be so faithful that we stray away from putting in the work. And if you don't put in the work, how can you expect to eat? Because the word also says a man um, that does not work shall not eat. So a lot of us are living richly on faith, but poor in work. And then we wonder why our lifestyles don't result into a bountiful harvest. We have through the roof faith, but whenever it comes to going to work, we're late, we call in sick, we don't want to humble ourselves to the manager and manager may be wrong, but they have the position. So that at work may not be the right time to, um, flex your authority or try to flex your dominion because we all have dominion. And I think a lot of times while we get on each other is because we do have the power of dominion, but we don't have dominion over people. We cannot control people. I said before in another sermon, if you want uh, somebody to follow your every instruction or something to follow your every instruction, get a dog. And even getting a dog, sometimes they still don't follow your instruction. So it's it's all about this topic is all about not allowing your flesh to creep in and allow you to sabotage your own harvest because whenever we do go to work and we have to humble ourselves to the manager there Understand that this is something that I have to do in order to maintain my harvest for this season. Don't think like this job is the rest of your life. Like I think for some people, it is. but if you want to be free financially, then you understand that this job is just a stepping stone in helping you get to where you're trying to go. So you also have to be aware of the environment. Is this an environment where I uh, show my dominion, where I flex my authority, or is this the environment where I have to humble myself to somebody because in this environment, they have a higher title than mine, and I need to hush and be quiet and follow instruction. And a lot of times people, be, I'm not hushing up. I got something to say. Mm-hmm. Well, okay. You know, you could talk in the unemployment line, but they don't have to sit there and listen to what you think if they're not paying you to think. So don't shy away from work. If you want to continue to increase the quality of your life, if you want to increase the money, then continue to work harder, continue to work smarter, actually, and understand that every dollar you get, it can be a seed to your bountiful harvest. Or if you don't have the discipline about spending or your expenses, then you're going to see a repetitive cycle of barely making it. And that's unfortunately the pattern a lot of us uh, live with is that we don't know what to do with the wealth that we accumulate. And when we don't know what to do with it, we start to sabotage our own blessing. You have already walked into the blessing, but because of a lack of either discernment or discipline, you have started to sabotage your own harvest. And especially if you talk to a friend that um, 
may not understand that and they're like, ooh, I couldn't be you. I got to say something. Or I won't let them talk to me that way. Well, now somebody is trying to influence without, you know, some people are messy like that. You know, they might not think that they are influencing, but a kingdom mindset person would be like, well, this is only for a season. Humble yourself to whatever authority figure is there for this season. Because is this job going to be something that you pursue for the next 10, 20 years? Hopefully not. Hopefully the job is, you know, something that is getting you to where you're trying to go. But understand that in order to maintain the harvest you already have, it's going to be on you to practice discernment, discipline, and to obey the original voice, the original command of our Lord uh, God Almighty. So I'm not um, going to be before you long. That was the topic. That was the um, understanding that I had for this evening. That we already are blessed bountifully, but don't sabotage your own harvest because like Adam, he started off with everything, but along the way, he ended up sabotaging his own harvest and was kicked out of the garden. So don't get kicked out of the garden. Maintain your garden. Use discipline. Protect your garden. Don't let the snake in because you think that I want to provide an environment for everybody. No, you don't want to provide an environment for the devil. No, we need to protect our harvest, protect our families, protect our households from outside influences that may not be trying to have the best um, intention for our family. Because like the devil, he did not have the best intention for Adam and Eve. Actually, he had the opposite. He had the worst intention. He wanted them to get kicked out of the Garden of Eden so that they can be separated from God because they were closer to God than the devil was. So the devil is obviously envious of you because your position with the Lord. So if we don't take advantage of our position and we allow the devil to come in and disrupt all that, or even somebody that may just be trying to get you to obey their ear, like we listened to, I um, believe it was Sarah, uh, who was that? I believe that was Sarah. No, that was Rebecca and um, Jacob and Esau. Yes. So whenever we do listen to the wrong voice or listen to the wrong influence, it's going to lead into um, uh, famine. And you're going to wonder why you continue to repeat that same process. So as you continue to grow into the word, uh, continue to use the sermon, discipline. Don't forget what position you are in and don't allow somebody else to make you question your position in the gospel or your position in life. Because you do have a balance for harvest, even though that the world tries to make you feel as you're less than, you're not valuable, as if you're not good enough. Don't believe those lies. You are good enough. You are blessed. You have a balance for harvest. But work on protecting it and work on growing and sowing because there is truth behind you reap what you sow. So like I've said before, you can make 100K a year, but if you spend 99,000 of it, you're still broke. So learn how to discipline, discern, and follow the principle of you reap what you sow. So that is the topic for this evening, uh, walking into a blessing. So I hope everyone receives it. I hope everybody applies it, stands on it. And I hope that this does improve um, the way you may view uh, your quality of life, if, uh, especially around the holidays. Uh, your kids got a list, you know, going out the door. And that might make you feel as if you're not good enough or you haven't done enough. But uh, the things are not the value. But it's one thing to be able to buy it. And it's one thing to not have the money to buy it. So don't allow the world to make you feel pressure as if you're not doing good enough. Just continue to improve on growing your harvest. Amen. Amen. So let's bow our heads and we'll pray. 
Heavenly Father, in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, Lord, thank you for the word that we have received. Thank you for flowing through us, not just to us. Thank you for showing us the principles of your word. Thank you for giving us a stable foundation to stand on, Father. Lord, thank you for showing us that in order to maintain a bountiful harvest, it is going to take the tools um, of discernment, of discipline, of following your voice rather than following our own voice or the voice of others, Father. Lord, thank you for showing us that as long as we seek your kingdom first, all things shall be added unto us. Thank you for also showing us that faith without works is dead. We got to get up. We got to go put in the work. We got to put skin in the game. We have to continue to utilize the tools that you have given us, the talents that you have given us, so that we can expand our harvest and not just settle for what we currently have when it is meant to be a seed and not just um, something that we consume. So, Lord, thank you for showing us that you are uh, the God of abundance. You are the God of overflow. You, you have already shown us how to maintain a bountiful harvest, how to receive a bountiful harvest. All we need to do is follow your instruction on how to do it and not allow any other doctrine to uh, creep in and mix things up. So, Lord, thank you for showing us that we need to obey your voice. You have already given us the instruction that we need to be successful and blessed and abundant. So, Lord, thank you for giving us your only begotten Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, so that we can have access to salvation, which is the most important. And, Lord, thank you for showing us on how to be good stewards over which you bless us with through your Son, Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father, for who you are and not just what you can do. We love you, Father, and thank you for loving us first. In the name of your only begotten Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, amen. Amen, amen. Um, we are a giving ministry. Our cash app is H-E-S-C-H-U-R-C-H, the number two. Um, once again, dollar sign, H-E-S-C-H-U-R-C-H, the number two. Uh, we are online every Wednesday, 7 p.m., and online every Sunday around 10 a.m. So please continue to be on the lookout. Uh, we definitely have more uh, videos on Facebook and YouTube if you want to receive more word. And continue to serve the Lord. God bless you.